A UPS is something you place on your computer or any electronic device that needs to have constant power. It can't be affected by power surges and power outages and stuff. And sometimes they break down. This is an American Power Conversion UPS and this one has a problem because my computer shut down. I'm servicing my UPS's today and this is my other UPS, this one here. I'm pretty sure the uh, the battery is shot on this one. Okay, um, 121 volts is my input. The power is turned off. We turn it on. We have 120 volts on the output. This one here appears to have a problem. It's not going into battery mode. So it could be the battery is dead. Let's watch what happens. When the voltage drops, this should kick in. But you notice what happened there when it kicked in, right? The power dropped momentarily here. Weird, because it appears to be working. But when I had a power a power glitch, this was on my computer. My computer shut down when there was a glitch of power. Of course, now it seems to be behaving properly. It certainly wasn't behaving properly when I was doing some editing the other day and we had a power bump and my computer just went off. Like someone had pulled the plug. I get went like someone had pulled the plug on it. It should be able to start up if I yeah, if I hit, hit that button, it'll go into startup. If it's, it'll cold start. So let's check out this APC to see how well it holds the voltage. So let's try increasing the voltage and see whether it will clamp it. So at 150 volts now, this is not doing anything to limit the voltage. If you remember the other one, it uh, clamped the voltage. Now this one here, as, I, as the voltage drops, it'll kick into battery mode. And it does that at, I think it's 100 volts. Yeah, just over 100 volts, it kicks in to battery mode. But it does nothing, nothing at all to this is a 130 volt bulb, so it's not going to hurt it that much from surging it. But it does nothing at all to affect uh, over voltage. So the trip light, as much as I don't like the trip light unit, because I think it was, I thought this one was a, was a better design. This one here is just a UPS. It does not do anything to compensate for lower voltage, and it does not do anything to compensate for over voltage. It does have surge suppression in it, but the surge suppressors don't kick in until it gets much higher than 150 volts. Uh, it does have uh, it does have uh, MOVs in it, but they only just clamp just like a regular surge suppressor. This is basically a backup power supply. Even if the voltage drops to 105 volts, Must be a little bit of a spot in my UP in my variac there. It's a little bit of a spot in my variac. Where I can feel it rough as I cross over it, and the light kind of flickers a bit. But even if it's even if you're running at 100 volts, the voltage where you were in a brownout condition, where everybody's got their air conditioners going and they're loading everything down, it's only 101 volts coming in. This one here is still only giving you 101 volts out, whereas as we saw with the trip light, 
it goes into power boost mode and it boosts the voltage back to 115. So in that respect, that other unit actually does a better job at cleaning up the power because it will boost the voltage back to where it belongs. This one won't do anything until it get, drops down to below 100 volts and then the battery kicks in and it goes into full battery mode. The other one, as you saw, it will boost the voltage when the voltage drops below, I think, what was it, 100 and, 105, I think it was? Between 105 and 110, it boosted up to 115, and it would keep it there. And then when it dropped down below 95, it was uh, switching to battery. And when the voltage went beyond 130, then it went into power regulation mode and dropped the voltage back down to 115. This one here, it just operates, it's either on or off. There's no in between. So this will keep your computer running. Although I don't know why it's working now, it wasn't. Um, I just had my computer shut down when I was editing. The lights flickered. They didn't go out, the lights just flickered. And my computer shut down. And this thing just let out. This thing just let out one beep like that. I had the, I had the, the, the buzzer silence, but it, ju it just let out one beep like that and the computer shut down. Either that or my computer was drawing more current. It could be the battery is getting weak. I should try a bigger bulb on this thing. Okay, let's draw a little more power. This time I have a 60 watt bulb and a 100 watt bulb plugged in. Now let's see what happens. I bet you it's going to shut down because I'm now drawing a more realistic load and I think the battery is probably just about toast in this thing. Ah, there's what happens. The battery is toast. Even when I try to fire it up. It's only coming up to like 55 volts. This thing's supposed to supply 450 watts. I was able to do 100 watts, but as soon as I try to put the 60 watt bulb on, let's try a new battery in this one. So the last time I worked on this, I had to modify the battery clamp to hold a different type of battery because uh, this one originally had this one originally had two six volt batteries in it. I didn't have any six volt batteries, so I had to modify this clamp so that it would hold a 12 volt battery. As I say, this thing was well thought out. It's really easy to change the battery in this because they put holes in the top of the chassis so that uh, if you have a long enough screwdriver you can take the battery out without having to take anything else apart. This UPS is actually a work of art. I really like this one and that's why I go to this effort to keep it running. So this is another battery that expired in 2015. Just slide the battery out of here and remove it. See what I had to do to modify this. At one point, this used two batteries that were about half the uh, width. They were, actually, they were, well, they were a little more than half the width. They were 10 amp hour, um, six volt cells and I replaced it with a 12 amp hour um, eight or sorry 12 volt eight amp hour so I'm gonna go find another one of these batteries see if that'll make this one work another old battery here this one here though is measuring at 13 volts so it should be fully charged I don't know what condition it's in because say these are these are all pulls these batteries that I've got kicking around here I should probably go and invest in a new battery, but I use what I, I have on hand. 
and in this case it's a used battery. The battery is easy enough to change so if this one won't power it up then I'll have to go and get a new one. Simple as that. But we'll try this one. Okay, new batteries in place. 100 watts, it's drawing no problem. Oops, in the wrong mode here. And we'll turn the other light on and see whether it will work. And it does. So, fault, bad battery. New battery, you know it works. That's all that went wrong with this one. And that's all I thought would ever be wrong with this one is the batteries, even if they're not being used, batteries do get old. These gel cells eventually will fail. And sometimes you can recharge them. I mean, the, the battery that's in here now is one that came out of an old UPS. And the UPS went into an alarm state, which required a dispatch to go out and change the UPS. It was used in the backup system for um, a, a fiber um, optic uh, ONT to power an ONT up so that the phone works. And when we get the trouble calls that the battery has failed, we go out and swap out the battery and the batteries get recycled. And what I've been doing is I've been taking a couple of batteries and I'll tr try to recharge them. And look at that, that grommet is just turned to mush. That was turning to mush too. Um, I recharge them to see, put them on a deep cycle charger and see if they come back. And some of them do, some of them don't. And the ones that have, I've put them into my UPS and run them for a little bit longer and uh, see if, how long it'll run for. But this one I put in a few years ago, I think it was three years ago that I changed this battery put a used battery in and it ran for three years and now it it failed again so another used battery went in and uh, we'll see how long this one goes before I have to repeat it again I'm sure it'll be another few years because this battery also is dated uh, uh, March 27th 2012 so that was when it was originally charged so when it was made was could have been made a couple of years before that for all I know but anyway um, that's uh, well, all we have on this one. As I say, uh, UPS is if you're having problems with them, uh, suspect the battery has gone bad. That's what I suspected on this one. And as I say, when I first tested it, it didn't appear to have a fault because it, it just didn't have enough of a load. But obviously my computer draws more than 60 watts and it put it into a, a shutdown state. And now just to clean up this mess, this uh, rubber grommet is melting. So we're going to get rid of them. Of course, they're there to protect the so that the uh, if the case if something got dropped on the case and the metal case got pressed down, they wouldn't touch the circuit board. So that's what I think they were there for. But anyway, it's it's become to the point where it's gone all turned to mush. So might as well get it out of here. It's not doing any good. Other than when the uh, rubber deteriorates, it could become conductive and cause problems. So we'll just wipe this out of here clean this up. I've got the power disconnected by the way now. Everything shut off and the battery is disconnected while I'm working on this. Can't stress safety enough. If you're working on a UPS, you always have to make sure you disconnect the battery as per the big warning right here. Risk of electric shock. Hazardous live parts inside this UPS are energized from the battery supply even when the input AC power is disconnected. So if you're working on one of these things, always make sure you disconnect the battery. Otherwise, you could find yourself uh, doing a little dance, or worse. I get a kick out of the, uh, the labeling there on the board. Solder side, no parts. No kidding. But seriously, this was a, a really well-built, you can just tell by the quality of that circuit board. This is a really well-built unit. This one was uh, made in the USA, and uh, let's say the, uh, it was expensive when I bought it. Like all computer hardware of the day, it was probably 450 bucks. But you got to remember, this is going back to probably 1993, 1994. I bought it at a place called Delta Computers. And uh, he's been out of business since about, uh, I think, 96 is when he closed up. There's been an appliance service shop in the same store since 97. And get this, in the front window, they didn't even bother to take down the sticker. He still, they've still got some Roland Digital Group stickers and computer-related stickers in the corner of the window that they never even bothered to take down when they moved in. One of the main reasons I'm cleaning this crap out of here now is because I don't need this going corrosive and attacking the board, which is what sometimes happens when you have these organic rubber, organic materials. 
is that uh, when they deteriorate they can uh, leach chemicals which can attack the copper so when you have something like that it's always a good idea to clean it up and get rid of it just so that you don't have to worry about problems down the road caused by breakdown it's like that uh, circuit glue stuff that circuit glue also causes lots of problems you can see how this is getting really soft this one this one hasn't melted but it's on its way thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one real soon